personally, I'm very passionate about longevity, and um, I've been looking into a lot of, um, you know, as you said, ways to not only extend my life to 100. I would love to live to 100 or beyond, only if my health span is as good. If I can continue doing the activities that I enjoy doing, then definitely um, long life would be something that we wish for all. But I think you know the people in your class had had legitimate. Um, reasons to say no to 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 longer life because as as you know they have seen probably in their um, in their lives that the uh, usually aging comes with a lot of health issues and um, you know it's so sad because a lot of people live years in their uh, late lives to stuck to a bed and to a television and this is uh, probably that why the perception is like no I don't want to live this kind of life. Well, I think that technology is here. That's a Lexus, okay, that many people have and use. Uh, but I think you're right. You do have to educate the elderly on how to use it. So I think AI, when it comes to medicine, I think AI is very helpful. However, I, I am concerned that we may be reverting people to a number. You know, um, physicians and providers like to say, well, there's a 99% chance, there's a 70% chance of this and that. And, and not, and I don't think, well, I, for myself, I don't want to hear about there's a 77% chance. I just want to know what my chances are and not what happened with 77 other people because then I want to know what about the other 23%, what's going on here? Uh, so I, I think you're right. The more data that is available to medicine, the more accuracy their diagnosis, but again, making sure that they look at the whole person and not just the data. It's going to be it's going to be useful. Yes, it's go, it's the future. But there was the other thing when you were talking about aging enhancement and um, for the elderly. And I and, and when you you have singularity. And my first introduction to singularity is a type of uh, AI enhancement, computer enhancement to certain parts to keep people functioning. And I think even if we go in that direction, if we come up with some prosthesis, some pill or something that. Um, in, enhances people's intelligence or helps them to be a little bit more mobile. Um, I think, again, we're looking at those who can afford it and those who cannot. Okay, so even with respect to the elderly, the technology, it's going, it's the, the best example is designer babies. Who can afford designer babies? Uh, the wealthy. The average person is not going to have a surrogate carry her child for her for nine months, but the wealthy will. They will hire someone to carry it. And so we're, we're back to the disparities. But AI is here. It's not going any place. Chat. So it's here. It's here to stay. And it may depend on how you monitor it, uh, how you regulate it. But but it's here. And it's part and it is something that the next generation young people will utilize. They will utilize it. OK, like uh, like Google, like when you ask them a question in class, the first thing they do is Google it and give you an answer. OK, uh, but so it's here. It's here to stay. And I think um, when, when that happens, I usually say, well, what else is related to you? you gave me the answer. But why is that the answer? What's going on? What's the background to it? And, and I think that may also be with chat um, GPT. So basically what they did is they created a computer program that, um, that consumed hundreds of millions and billions of letters and, and text. And it kind of uh, found a pattern in, these, in this text. Uh, and this pattern helps you predict the next word and predicts the next sentence. And all of a sudden we have a computer program that can write based on all the text that ha it has received on the internet. So it knows about a wide array of topics, but it knows basically on a statistical significance. So for example, if you know the majority of people, let's say, are pro-abortion, for example, so the, the computer program will rank pro-abortion sentiment high and, and it will start producing text that is pro-abortion. Um, so that's where also the concerns on is bias. So instead of like reading a lot in the paper and discovering that, oh, this is not relevant to my research. Well, you know, you could upload this entire paper, hundreds of pages into ChatGPT. It will give you summaries and it will give you, is it relevant to my research or not? Should I read for, for, further or should I stop? So this is uh, just new ways of, of using it as, as a tool for good, in my opinion. But again, 
just like the you know the, the nuclear energy, right? Like you could use it to power cities with electricity, and you could use it to create uh, an atomic bomb. I think the same applies to to ChatGPT. Okay, and notice I didn't say HIV AIDS for the high income countries because we have access to those antiretroviral drugs, but there are still many places in southern Africa where they don't have access to it. Okay, uh, and so the other problem right. is that once you educate the population, then you can have more healthcare workers, and if you have more healthcare workers, then you have more people to provide healthcare services to the population. But it isn't all about healthcare because that demographic transition that we saw in the high income country, countries that are high income today, uh, that was the result of economic development. That was the result of people eating better and safer working conditions, okay? And better nutrition reduced the maternal mortality rate, it reduced the infant mortality rate, and it caused people to live longer because they were healthier, okay? So it's, it's kind of like a combination of things, okay? Your low income countries, uh, the concerns are pneumonia, malaria, yellow fever, um, oh, um, colds, yeah, so they're more, Malaria, what else is out there? Um, trying to, HIV, AIDS, okay. And notice I didn't say HIV, AIDS for the high income countries because we have access to those antiretroviral drugs, but there are still many places in Southern Africa where they don't have access to it, okay? Uh, and so the other problem right. is that once you educate the population, then you can have more healthcare workers. And if you have more healthcare workers, then you have more people to provide healthcare services to the population. But it isn't all about healthcare because that demographic transition that we saw in the high income country, countries that are high income today, uh, that was the result of economic development. That was the result of people eating better and safer working conditions, okay? And better nutrition reduced the maternal mortality rate, it reduced the infant mortality rate, and it caused people to live longer because they were healthier. I, I, uh, my hesitation, it's almost like students are not doing well in math because they're too dependent on the calculator. Okay, growing up, we did not have a calculator. Okay, you had to sit there and do the math yourself. Okay, you go into a supermarket or the cash registers or program. So you give them the money, they put it in the system, the system tells them how much money to give you back. They don't know how to do their arithmetic. Okay, and so I think that will also be a problem with chat GPT that if you are depending on a program to write something, can you write something when the computer breaks down? Okay, like my, my other PC is not working. I have seen situations where the computer goes down in a supermarket and everybody's just standing around. They can't do anything. Uh, and you say, why don't you just, you know, do it by hand? They don't know how, okay? Everything has been. So um, that is my concern about uh, G chat GPT. That is also my concern about AI. Yeah, yeah, that we, we become too dependent on the technology. At the same time though, uh, yeah. although we, we fully understand the limitations, I wanna see say, okay, the, the two biggest problems you mentioned related to aging, economy, economics and education. And I could easily see that technologies like ChatGPT and large language models are fundamental to improving opportunities, economical opportunities for uh, people at the bottom of the um, you know of the income level, and I can always see it as an educational helper. The only difference is that instead of giving assignments that ChatGPT can produce, we have to think in a more creative way of how we teach our children and our um, our students. So it definitely have big implications on how uh, we teach. ChatGPT is very much as you described; it's a large data set. The only difference is that this data set is human generated text. So basically what they did is they created a computer program that um, that consumed hundreds of millions and billions of letters and, and text. And it kind of uh, found a pattern in, these, in this text. Uh, and this pattern helps you predict the next word and predicts the next sentence. 